What if I told you that the real reason that billions of snow crab disappeared in the Bering Sea is actually aliens? Well, at least that's one theory according to the comment section on our latest video. Along with illegal fishing by Russia and China, and radiation from the 2011 Fukushima disaster. Now I pride myself on being open-minded, so we actually looked into some of these what seem to be plausible ideas. So get your tinfoil hats ready, because we're headed down the rabbit hole to fact check these conspiracy theories. I'm KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with primarily marine mammals. But first, let's actually take a second to talk about the psychology behind conspiracy theories. According to an article in Live Science, conspiracy theories emerge when important things happen that people want to make sense of. They grow and thrive under conditions of uncertainty. Billions of snow crab mysteriously disappearing definitely fits that bill. And I say billions because there is some discrepancy about the actual number. A lot of sources say 1 billion snow crabs, but there are several other sources saying anything from 7 to 8 billion. But according to the Alaska Fisheries Science Center, the actual number could be much higher. In 2018, the Alaska Fisheries Science Center observed the highest abundance of snow crab ever recorded. They estimated around 11.7 billion crabs were present. In 2021, though, the Bering Sea numbers had dropped to just about 940 million. That means nearly 11 billion crabs had disappeared. And these inconsistencies, as well as the competing scientific theories, have opened the door for conspiracy theories. One very prevalent conspiracy theory in my comment section is that the Fukushima disaster of 2011 is responsible for the collapse of the snow crab. In 2011, a powerful earthquake and a 14 meter high tsunami struck Japan, damaging the Fukushima nuclear power plant, leading to the most severe nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. Water that was highly contaminated with radioactive isotopes and fuel rod material was discharged directly into the ocean after seawater was used to cool the damaged reactors. A study taken a month after the earthquake found significantly elevated concentrations of radioactive isotopes near the discharge site. These isotopes were also detected in zooplankton and mesopelagic fish. However, the consensus among scientists was that these elevated levels, while significant, were below those considered harmful to humans and marine animals. But the risk was not zero, and that naturally created controversy. It of course didn't help that officials originally downplayed the scope of this Fukushima disaster, which led to mistrust, which is of course the birth of conspiracy theories. So the United Nations actually conducted another study in 2013 and found that the concentrations of radioactive isotopes in Fukushima coastal waters had mostly returned to normal and were around the level measured before the accident. By 2015, less than 0.05% of marine life caught off the Fukushima coast had radioactive isotope concentrations above the legal limit. And in 2021, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration stated that no evidence that radionuclides from the Fukushima incident were present in the U.S. food supply. It is also important to recognize the timing of this incident. The Fukushima nuclear disaster happened in 2011. As I mentioned, in 2018, a record number of snow crab were recorded in the Bering Sea. And the crabs that were caught in that 2018 harvest had zero evidence of radionuclides. So while this nuclear disaster remains one of the worst of all time, there's absolutely no evidence to suggest that it is part of the collapse of the snow crab. Then what about illegal fishing from China and Russia? I was a bit surprised when I looked this one up because I originally dismissed it as just being openly bigoted and racist. But it turns out illegal fishing by these two countries is actually an extremely important issue. 
In fact, the U.S. Coast Guard has stated that illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing is the number one global maritime security threat. China is the world's largest perpetrator of illegal fishing and often uses its fishing fleet to mask other illegal activities. China's maritime militia consists of over 700,000 fishing vessels, and the fishermen on these vessels are all on the military payroll. Many of these vessels reportedly carry weapons and surveillance equipment instead of nets. China uses its militia to assert dominance in the South China Sea and to intimidate countries like the Philippines. But what does this have to do with snow crab? Not a lot, as it turns out. This illegal fishing is primarily occurring in the South China Sea, the Yellow Sea, and the Korea Strait. Not so much the Bering Sea, which is where the snow crab have disappeared. Granted, I am a marine biologist and certainly not an expert in geopolitical conflicts such as this, but if China had a militia illegally entering U.S. waters, I am reasonably confident that would be the dominant news story, not some just off to the side cancellation of a snow crab season. So what about Russia? Because the U.S. and Russia actually share waters in the Bering Sea. A study by the World Wildlife Federation found that three quarters of the king crab consumed in the U.S. market comes from Russia. Also, that there were major discrepancies between the amount of king crab reported to be caught in Russian waters and the amount imported into countries. And that two to four times the legal harvest limit had entered the global marketplace. Where this story falls apart a little bit, though, is that that study was done in 2014. And again, the 2018 snow crab population was the largest ever recorded. As I mentioned in our last video, which you can find right up here, until recently, there had never been a shortage of crabs reported by the Pacific or Atlantic, partly because snow crabs have an incredibly high reproductive potential. Every year, a female crab can carry up to 150,000 eggs and the males are capable of reproducing at both the immature and mature stages of their life cycle. Two to four times the legal harvest limit does not add up to 11 billion missing crabs. And it also doesn't explain why the population hasn't rebounded like it has in previous years. Also, this 2014 report specifically mentions illegally harvested king crab. So while it's plausible and even probable that the Russian overfishing played a role in the cancellation of the king crab season, there just really isn't the evidence to support that in the snow crab season. So if the snow crab crash isn't due to Fukushima or Russian and China overfishing, then what did it? The truth is that it is certainly a confluence of many factors, including overfishing, migration, and overpredation. Some factors we didn't even have time to cover in the last video include ocean acidification, disease, and even climate-driven cannibalism. And you guessed it, all of these factors stem from or contribute to climate change. Man-made climate change. According to the Alaska Fisheries Science Center's survey of the snow crab range, the average temperature from 1982 to 2012 was 1.3 degrees. In 2018, it was 3.5 degrees. You can't get the Bering Sea that warm without human-caused global warming. All available data really suggests this is a climate change story. Of course, there are many of those in the comments section of my last video that suggest that climate change itself is a conspiracy theory. The flaw in that thinking is that human-driven climate change is far and away the scientific consensus. You can find a link right up here to the joint statement from NASA and 18 other scientific associations, such as the American Geophysical Union, the American Meteorological Society, and the National Academy of Sciences that says, observations throughout the world make it clear that climate change is occurring. And rigorous scientific research demonstrates that the greenhouse gases emitted by human activities are the primary driver. The link also lists nearly 200 worldwide scientific organizations that hold the belief that climate change is indeed human-caused. 
And here's where the real damaging part of these conspiracy theories comes in, because what they want you to believe is that there is nothing that we can do about climate change. And so you should just sit around and hang out. But that's not the purpose of this channel. We believe in action. We believe in empowerment. Because the good news is there are plenty of things that we can do to help with global warming. We can hold companies, larger companies, responsible, and we can vote. Just this week, Brazil ousted their climate change denying president in a victory that scientists are calling one for humanity and life itself. Or maybe that meme that your uncle posted on Facebook is right, and this is really just some elaborate scheme to starve the American people of snow crab. And at the risk of doing this all over again, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Which led to mistrust, which of course is the birth of mis mysterious theories. But according to the Alaska Fisheries Science Center, fisheries? No evidence that radionuclides from the Fukushima incident were president. President? That's another one. This illegal activity is far and away happening in the South China Sea, the Yellow Sea, and the Korea Strait. Damn it! Too late.